We got a bit of a bummer news this week. Right at the end of the week here, Twitch announced that they are imposing a 100-hour limit on highlights and uploads for your Twitch channel. Now, this does not apply to your stream VODs, which only have like a 30-day life anyway, or your clips, which seem to just be staying forever. But it does apply to your highlights that you've made from past VODs to keep them online to get around that 30-day lifespan and to direct uploads. I'm going to show you how you can archive your VODs and preserve them, create a VOD channel, whatever. But I also want to talk about what that represents, because this comes along with other news that Amazon is pushing out with regards to cost-cutting. Uh, they just announced that they're shutting down their app store, which would potentially <laughs> conflict with their supposedly massive sales of their kids' tablets and things like that, so I don't, I don't know what's going on there. But this also means that Twitch is not attempting to compete on the video front anymore. They're still clearly pushing clips and they did the whole mobile app revamp and whatever to try to go after the TikTok-y kind of market. But for a while, Twitch was making it seem like they might make an attempt to compete with uploaded videos, just standard video uploads. And for a while, I was syndicating my content to Twitch. I was doing video uploads of my standard videos. That way people had a place to watch it. And they used to have features like community posts and whatever where you could point out that you had a video uploaded and people would go watch it and people would make clips of those videos and things like that. They are clearly not going to compete with YouTube in any way with that. It's weird, especially because you think Amazon has enough money to not worry about these kinds of things, but it also, it's just traffic that you could send to Twitch that is not going to be sent to Twitch anymore. Everyone's just going to mass export all of their stuff to YouTube and start promoting YouTube more. And with YouTube already having live there, it's going to make it that much harder to convince people to leave to then go to Twitch. And I think that's going to be a problem. And this puts YouTube in the perfect position right now to launch another attempt at YouTube gaming like they did 10 years ago this year, where it was a dedicated streaming hub and page and separate content and all of that. It puts YouTube in a really strong position to just have a dedicated live hub that actually works, unlike what they have now. And they're getting everyone else's VODs. So... The 100 hour limit again applies to VODs and upload or to highlights and uploads, not your recent VODs or your clips. You will have until April 19th, so about a month, to cut down on that. Otherwise, they will do a one time delete of all of your least viewed content to get you under that 100 hour limit. And then you won't be able to contribute any more clips or uploads or, or highlights or uploads or anything like that until you stay under that limit. And so I'm right at about 90 hours, both from unpublished and published videos and highlights and things like that. So I need to go through and clear that out. You can do that in your creative dashboard under the content. Now to move your highlights to YouTube, you can go through individually and find each one and click, you know, export, wait for it. It's going to take forever. Or I would recommend using a download manager. I need to be very careful when I talk about this because almost 10 years ago, I got a community guideline strike for talking about this, even though YouTube was covered in way more worse things at the time. I'm going to talk about some download managers that you should only use for Twitch. Wink, wink, wink. We're talking about Twitch here. Okay? So there are two that I'm going to recommend. The first one is a GUI, a standard computer application that you might be used to. It's called Twitch Leecher DX. This is a fork of an old Twitch Leecher program I used to use back in the day. And with this one, you have to sign in with a Twitch account. You can make a throwaway account if you don't trust it, but you can even see in the Twitch permissions because it just opens it up in your browser. You can see in the Twitch permissions, it just wants to see your subscription status in case you're you know, downloading sub VODs. And that is basically it. And then you can search any channel for VODs, highlights, or clips. So you type in your channel name, even if you're on another sign-in, and then highlights and search, and it'll just populate. You have to change the date. So I just went back to 2010, and then hit search, and it will populate with a full list of all of your highlights, and you can just queue them all to download. This is super easy. It is an option available to you. My preferred method is method number two. Really nice little manager there, and then you can go through and re-upload everything to YouTube. Now, this will be super annoying because you got to retitle everything. It'll pick up some titles from whatever. And do keep in mind, you have streamed to Twitch in a very compressed format, typically about 6 megabits per second. Reprocessing that through YouTube compression, you're going to take a quality hit, and that's unfortunate. If you want to improve on that, I would recommend uploading to uh, a PeerTube instance, for example. But for most people, you're just uploading to YouTube. Understand that you're going to take a quality hit and... That's just going to be it. A bit of a faster way, that's my preferred way, but not as accessible to everyone, is a uh, CLI, a command line utility called YTDLP. Now, this lets you download video from sites and 
manage your Twitch VODs. Again, you have to go to your videos section on your channel page and then click highlights and then copy that URL without the ant. It's going to say and sort equals uh, time or something like that. You got to delete that part. Just videos, highlights, and paste that in with YT-DLP. By default, it's going to grab the highest quality video and audio. Uh, I have a preferred config file that you can put in your home folder on Windows um, that you could use instead. And it's just going to download all your highlights. And it's going to go through one at a time. And with my config file, it's going to put them in individual folders. This is my preferred way to go. It's a lot easier to get the best quality. Both are going to work great for you. And then again, you can migrate them to a YouTube channel or what have you. I will say, if you haven't been doing it already, OBS makes it dead simple to record a local copy of your VODs so that you never need to do this whole highlight thing and you could have been running a VOD channel the whole time a lot easier in that if you are streaming and you go to record settings in the settings tab, you can tell it to just use the stream encoder. No additional performance. Nothing extra is needed. It's just going to send a copy of the feed that it's been sending to Twitch to your hard drive so that you can save it. Obviously, that takes up space over time, but like it's a lot better than scrambling to download it after the fact. I do recommend that doing more moving forward. I do have videos on recording higher quality VODs. If you're realizing the quality hit on YouTube sucks, if you want to start maintaining your VODs on YouTube or something like that, I will probably make a dedicated video about, you know, juggling that. But this is kind of what you need to do at the moment if you want to stay under that limit. That way you can still have a VOD. I recommend just making a dedicated, whatever your username is, VODs channel on YouTube and just uploading those. You're probably not going to stay in the YouTube partner program. I turned one of my really old gaming channels into a VOD channel. And frankly, I haven't even uploaded in a year because I've been streaming a ton. So like it's getting kicked out of the partner program, but like you're not making money from people watching your stream VODs most of the time. It's just going to be there for posterity's sake, for history, for archive, for your preservation. I do recommend keeping those locally as well or in case you ever want to make highlights or whatever, because taking your compressed stream VOD, uploading it to YouTube, running it through YouTube's compression, and then downloading it again later to make highlights or something from is going to end up looking terrible. So I do recommend keeping local copies. I will have a video coming out in March probably about offsite backups and things like that so that you can continue to manage your storage as a streamer and content creator. But I wanted to just put this out there in case you hadn't seen the news. Uh, Twitch is imposing this 100 hour limit on your highlights, which will be your VODs if you highlight them for archive's sake and your uploads. It means Twitch is no longer even going to try to compete as an upload platform, which is disappointing. And here are a couple ways that you can do this. Let me know what questions you have in the comments. Join us on Discord or the forums for more proper support on this kind of thing. And remember to be kind. Rewind.